We simply can't grasp the fact that there was something at work in this world thousands of years ago that does not fit with the history we are spoon-fed in this day and age. At the ancient site of Pumapungu, for example, we still see evidence of advanced building techniques that seem to have been very accurate and very deliberate in design to the point that we should consider the enormous scale. Not only in the building of this place, but also in the design and the purpose as to what it could have been for. Just like we see with other ancient sites across the globe, we grow up believing the far-fetched stories that were basically made up by the first people to reach these sites. But if you consider that the civilizations that popped up around these places were already saying that the ancient sites existed before they arrived at the locations, then you must consider that history is much older than we are led to believe, and the lost civilizations would have been devastated by the Great Floods as foretold by every civilization from around the world. At Pumapanku, there is evidence of a cataclysmic event in the form of scattering of giant stones distributed all over the place. This would have taken a very strong force of nature to affect this area in such a devastating way. The excavations at Pumapanku are only at the two feet deep mark, and the deeper they dig, the more they are bound to find. Incredibly, there has been ground penetrating radar carried out at this site that reveals that under the ground there are in fact a series of massive chambers that the so-called archaeologists are turning a blind eye to. What's that all about? Wait till you see this. In this footage, we can clearly see wild variations that the compass is reacting to something. What's going on with this, you have to wonder. The compass seems to only react across the stone and not react vertically. At the famous H blocks, Watch what happens when the compass is placed at the cut out center of the H block. That is a variation of 180 degrees at least. Is that not just crazy or what? As we move the compass across the surface of the block, you clearly notice that it points to the middle of the block. The complexity of the cutting of the stones here at Pumapanku is astonishing. What type of structure was this place meant to be? The foundation stones at this place are upwards of 140 tons each and were quarried beyond a mountain range nearly 10 miles away. It is stunning to think how they transported these huge blocks and you can't help but wonder what kind of advances an ancient civilization may have possessed to make this happen. The cutting of these stones and the magnetism we see could be the result of the tools used to cut and shift these stones into place. Perhaps some sort of elevation knowledge that is long forgotten about, just a thought. The magnetic activity at play here are anomalous to say the least. What was the purpose of the H-blocks and what exactly was Pumapongku when it was a functional site? The tight-fitting blocks with no binding mortar would be some achievement today, never mind thousands of years ago. What do you guys think is going on with these compass readings? Comments below and as always, thank you for watching.